Hi, continuing with our development of uh, loads on uh, on a weld. So let's quickly re recap what we're trying to do. We have a welded joint. This is a plate and connected to a bar, a L-shaped bar, and there are forces acting on it. And we have welded it here. The distances are shown. And we wanted to figure out what is the net load on the weld. So for that, the first thing we did was we actually identified the plane of the weld. Then we put on the weld lines. We found the center of the centroid of the weld here. And then we put X, Y, and Z axis. And there are essentially six types of loads on the weld. So let us look through the different load components. This is sideways shear. Can you see that? It's going in the plane of the weld and going sideways, right? This is up and down shear. Can you see that? It's shearing it up and down. Okay. The third kind of thing, so it's shearing it like that, like that. So the third kind of thing is pull or push. Okay. This is normal load. Then this is sideways bending. That means this portion is going to come out that portion is going to get squeezed in. Can you see from the arrow, that portion gets squeezed in, this portion is going to come out. So that's sideways bending. This one is up and down bending. And this one, this point, these points are coming out, these points are squeezing, squeezed in. Can you see that? Then the last one is twist. That is, this whole thing is getting rotated that way, counterclockwise. That makes sense to you? So those are the net effects. So let us calculate the stresses due to each of them. Okay. The stresses due to shear is pretty easy. So let us calculate the six stresses due to the six things. So the stress due to the shear is actually quite easy to do. The stress due to the direct loads are pretty easy. So let us say escape and then I'm going to do that. I'm going to move this to the side. And so this is Sideways shear. I, sorry, excuse me. Sideways shear. And this will give me sigma. Now remember, our notation is the phase, the force. So the phase is the Z phase. The force is the X direction. That will be Fx over A. And that turns out to be 40 divided by area is length times thickness times number of faces, that turns out to be fairly low and that turns out to be 20 PSI. Okay, so next one will be up and down shear. I'm deliberately giving you names which are not standard but which are descriptive, okay? Because I want you to get used to the idea that these things mean something. They're not just some random name. So if you see sideways shear, you know what's happening, right? So up and down shear says sigma. So that's this guy. This guy. And you can see it's Fy divided by area. So this is Zy equal to Fy over area, which turns out to be Fy is 40 pounds divided by area is 4 times 1 fourth times half times 2, that is 20 PSI again. Then next one will be the push or pull. That's this guy. And you can see this will give me normal force. The force is in the Z direction, the face is in the direct Z direction. So this will be Sigma ZZ. Sigma ZZ is FZ over A, which turns out to be um, minus 100 divided by 4 times 1 fourth times half, sorry, times 2, which turns out to be uh, fifth, minus 50 PSI. What does minus 50 mean? It's getting squeezed. Can you see that? It's getting compressed. These things are the same throughout the weld. These three things are the same anywhere in the weld. Okay. 
On the other hand, this bending business will be different at different points on the web. Can you see this is the neutral axis for the sideways bending? That's the neutral axis for the sideways bending. And the bending stiffness, this will be uh, at the neutral axis, the stiffness is the, the bending stress will be zero. This will increase. This will be positive stress. That will be negative stress. Right? So I have to look at the four corners. So for the bending stiffness, we have to look at each of them. So bending so I have this thing and this is sideways bending this is my and my turned out to be uh, 1160 1160 inch pounds and we are very much interested in these two points or these two points this is where the furthest along the x direction. Can you see that? And notice this is this side is tension. This side is compression. And if I pick the point A, so this is G. So this is XA, that's YA. And then we know that XA is 2 inches. YA is 2 inches because this distance was 4, that distance was 4. And this is the center of gravity, so I mean, center of mass or centroid, and so that's right there. So that's xa is two inches, ya is two inches. So we know how to calculate this. So remember, it is distance from the neutral axis, right? So that's xa, and it is compression. So this this will give me sigma zz at a will be which is the worst case scenario or B or C, any one of these corners, I'm just picking that A corner will be minus MY times XA divided by I around the Y axis. Right? This is our same formula, but remember now it's sideways and not up and down. See, again, this is one of those things that you got to get used to. Sometimes bending will be up and down. Sometimes bending will be sideways. You have to know which one to use. So notice, I want for a for a uh, for two weld lines like this. I want to find the moment of inertia around this axis. Can you see that? How would I do that? Well, I don't have to sit and calculate. I can go look it up on my nice moment of inertia table. It's out here. This is table actually nine two. And if you go look at that, I got two of them. Two parallel welds. Moment of inertia, which around which axis? So that's what we need to figure out. So notice this is moment of inertia around this axis like that. And this is moment of inertia around this axis. All of them are like that. So which one do we want? Notice our geometry is like this. So I'm going to look at this guy, D cubed over six. D is this length, which was four inches for us. So we can calculate it. I can go back up here and I can say, okay, that's four cubed over six. So let us substitute the values. This is minus 1160 times two divided by four cubed over six. That turns out to be minus 870 PSI. So this is sideways bending. The next one will be up and down bending. That means I have this thing. Here is the neutral axis. I am bending it like this. Now this is tension, compression. This is the x-axis. So if I compute this, this is mx. We already calculated it. mx, mx was minus 116 inch pounds. And notice I'm looking at the point A. So this will be, so this distance is x, a, that will be y, a. 
and I'm interested in the ya distance because this is the neutral axis distance from the neutral axis is that much so I'm going to get sigma zz at a due to up down bending will be minus mx times ya over ixx notice it was minus myxa over iyy this time it is minus mx ya over ixx sorry it's plus this is tension so that turns out to be minus so i'm going to take that plug it in here so minus 160 times ya is 2 divided by ixx i can go look it up here And it's this guy now. And that turns out to be that BD cubed over 2. Oh, by the way, I forgot to multiply by a factor of time, the weld throat thickness, right? So I got to do that. So this is times throat thickness, which is 1 fourth inch, and then I'll get 870. So if I do this one, this one will again turns out to be. 4 times 4 squared over 6 times 1 fourth, which will turn out to be a fairly small number. This will turn out to be minus 120 psi. So notice that there are lots of contributions to the normal stress. There is because of push and pull. There is because normal stress because of sideways bending. There is normal stress because of up down bending. The last one we have to do is norm, the, the shear stress due to torsion, twisting, so if I look at twisting, I am going to draw this and this takes a little bit of drawing, so pay, pay some attention to this, so here is the plate, here is the weld line, here is the weld line, right? Here is the center and I am twisting it with a torque which is mz. So if I look at the point A, this distance is Ra and the, because of the torque there will be a shear stress tau like this and this will be tau equals to Tr over J which is mz Ra over J. So, so far fine. But the problem is this at some funny angle. I am going to break this up. So this is x a y a theta that's theta. So notice there will be a y component and a x component. The y component will be tau in the y direction is called sigma z y at a turns out to be tau cos theta which is mz r a cos theta over j but r a cos theta is x a so this will be mz x a over j okay if i do that i will get a fairly uh, simple result which turns out to be mz is 400 times x a is 2 divided by how do I find j oh yeah we got a table so I gotta go look it up and I'm really interested in sorry not in torch bending but in torsion torsion this is that one that I'm interested in and it tells me that j u is this so take this d times 3 b squared plus d squared over 6 times thickness so I'm going to go up here I'm going to say, okay, that's no problem, divided by J is, um, let us see, it was 4 times 3 times 4 squared plus 4 squared divided by 6, that's the formula times 1 half and this will turn out to be, uh, sorry, 1 fourth, this is the thickness, so if I calculate it, it will turn out to be 75 psi. That's sigma zy due to torque and then I'll get another one tau in the x direction 
this way notice the x direction is positive that way so it will be minus tau sin theta which will be minus mz or a sin theta over j which is minus mz y a over j if you compute it i will get this as to be minus 75 psi so now let's put it all together the thing is you're thinking man this is a long calculation i got to do all this r sin theta r chi theta no the final result is actually quite easy we are going to summarize this so sigma zz at a equals fz over a plus mx ya over ixx minus my x a over i y y what is this this is push or pull this one is up down moment this one is sideways moment okay and this will turn out to be we can compute each of this minus 50 minus 800 sorry 120 minus 870 which turns out to be about 1040 psi sigma zx at a will turn out to be fx over a minus mz y a over j this is sideways shear this one is due to torque this one turns out to be 20 minus 75 which is minus 55 psi and then sigma zy at a will be fy over a plus mz xa over j this is up down shear and this is due to torque and this will turn out to be 20 plus 75 which turns out to be 125 psi so notice on this phase i have sigma zz i have sigma zx and i have sigma zy those are the stresses but it turns out this is only nominal very crudely computed nominal stresses we cannot really know what the actual stresses are they are very very messy what we do is the following we follow the guidelines that are given and we compute equivalent shear stress which turns out to be square root of this is how we are going to compute the equivalent shear stress sigma zx squared plus sigma zy squared plus sigma zz squared if you say hey wait a minute that's not how we computed the von mises stress i'm here to tell you this is not the von mises stress because this is not a bar or something like that this is a welded joint so the von mises stress kind of thing will not work for this okay this is actually how you compute the equivalent shear stress in our case this is square root of 125 squared plus 55 squared plus 1040 squared which turns out to be 1048 psi okay now what the aws says is compare with shear yield strength of the weld of the weld material 
also specifies also compare with breakage of either plate or a bar what do i mean by that there are three ways in which it can fail right so let me explain what i mean you go here either this can break or the plate can break or the weld itself can crack typically speaking it's very rare for the weld to crack usually the the thing is either the crack will go at the bar side or on the plate side so those are the two things we're going to look at we will look look at this in the next lesson